The Small Business Show, episode 232, for Wednesday, July 17th, 2019. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co. The show you know, BFA Small Business Three sponsors today, which means three URLs for you. Linode.com slash SBS, thealternativeboard.com slash SBS, and go.co slash SBS. Visit all of those now. We'll tell you why you visited them a little bit later. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. I got to put my guitar down after that intro. Yeah, just you're rocking that, man. That, you really that, got that yeah, down. Killing it. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> We've talked about, I wish I could play the guitar on, on the show before, but uh, you could. I always think, uh, you just yeah, have I know, to learn. I know. That's all. Yes, I just have to learn. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. Future, future endeavor. There you go. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, so, what's I, going on, man? I had How you doing? I'm good. I had something good. come up this week that I just wanted to like share as a PSA. I think that's all it's going to be, but. You know okay. how we are. It might turn uh, into the yes. entire episode. So yep. I was talking with, I was following up with a customer uh, on a potential ad campaign, right? And and it was, they, you know, they had pinged us a couple of months ago and said, we're looking for this particular sponsor, what shows would fit and, you know, what's the pricing and availability and downloads and, you know, all that stuff, right? For podcast ads. Okay, sure. great. No problem. Sent them a thing. And because I you know, am in business and want to stay in business. I put that into my, I use SaneBox to do my follow-ups. And uh, so I put it into SaneBox and then I followed up with them, you know, and was like, Hey, like a month's gone by or whatever, anything on this? No, not yet. Okay. Yep. And, and I, and you sort of get an idea of pacing how long a, a certain customer takes to turn around on a deal or whatever. And this customer I knew would take potentially a month or two, like these things aren't you know, I'll, I'll give you an order tomorrow. Like it's, there's a whole pitch process that goes on. It's like, okay, that's fine. No problem. So I followed up again a month later. Hey, just wanted to see where are we? Oh, right. So their budget became a lot smaller than they thought, which happens all the time. And uh, so no problem. And they decided to only go with, uh, and actually I had this t happen twice. So I'm trying to figure out which story to tell. It doesn't really matter. They only happen to go with like, TV related shows and, and entertainment stuff. So we didn't go with you guys. And I was like, oh, I, like it, it, like as I'm reading this, I'm like, why didn't you? We represent the Roddenberry Star Trek network. They're like, oh, they said they went with only sci fi related content. Oh, and I'm like, it. holy crap, we have the, the Roddenberry Star Trek network. Like, not only do we have sci fi content, we have what I like to call the uh, you know, unfair competitive advantage because no one else can sell Roddenberry Star Trek podcast yeah, yeah. ads. You know, there's there's one Roddenberry doing this yeah, right sure. now and we've got them, you know, so and we, you know, we are their representative. And so I was like, hey, you know, and it was just like I was I mean, I, there was a, a frustration within me. But of course, I don't express, express this to the customer because it's really not their fault, you know, and it hit me that it was like, man, you know. It's so easy for your customers to get tunnel vision about you and your business, because if we're if they're working with me on, say, the business shows that we have or the tech shows that we have, they think about us as, oh, we can get you. Oh, that's where we go. There's a client that wants business shows. Call Backbeat Media. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's a client that wants tech shows. Call Backbeat Media. And both of those things are true. But also client that wants sci fi shows. Holy crap. Call Backbeat Media. Right. They don't think about it that way. They get their tunnel vision. They get into automatic, you know, responses and sure. and they just they stop thinking about you broadly. They start thinking about you as the one thing that they've done with you that that works well. And there's nothing wrong with that, except when the next deal comes in and they don't yeah, think the opportunity. Of you. Yeah. yeah, you lose the opportunity. So, so how do you uh, go about, you know, presenting that to them in, in such a way that it's not um uh, you know, going to take away from what you are talking to them about the specific, you know, niche market, perhaps. Right. But then also letting them know, hey, by the way, if you're ever in this other markets, we also have, you know, these opportunities. That's you know it. You, I mean? you need to create that opportunity. And what I do is we keep with especially with our ad agency partners, which is who this was. Uh, I keep a uh like a live spreadsheet, like a Google doc or a Synology drive doc or, you know, whatever it is, but some sure. web based spreadsheet that everybody can have access to. 
And whether I actually change anything or not, once a quarter, I go through now. Uh, we, I used to do it whenever we change something. Now it's just going to happen once a quarter where I go through, I make sure everything's up to date. And then I send them a thing. Hey, you know, here's the new shows that we've added in the last quarter or this show grew. So any actual changes I will highlight. But otherwise, you know, I also just send them. Hey, just wanted to remind you, you know, here's this. We I just made sure I went through. I looked. Everything's up to date for you. Not only does it have our tech stuff on it, but of course, you know, all our great business shows, all our great music shows, all our great sci fi shows or our Star Trek shows, you know, however I want to pitch it to that person. And just right. reminding them, like, here's the thing you know about. And then here's these three other things that all you have to do is click this link and you will be able to see them, you know. So I, that's one way to do it. But honestly, yeah. you know, the other way is to just keep following up and saying, what do you have? What do you have? And eventually someone will tell you, hey, I don't have any business for you because all you have is tech shows and I'm looking for sci fi shows. And it's like, ha ha, great opportunity knocks. I have those, you know, so yeah, that's cool. That's yeah. really good. I think that's important to be aware of. So you don't, yep. you know, miss out on those opportunities. Yeah, for sure. Yep. That's yep. Good. So good, good, good reminder. Tunnel vision. Yeah, exactly. Because it happens. Good it reminder. happens to all of us. It's, it's yeah. Like, you know, I don't like I said, I don't fault the customer at all. It's hard even <clears> to <throat> fault myself. But excuse me. Yep. But but it, it always falls back to me. Right. Like I have to take sure. accountability for this. Otherwise, I can't fix the problem. I always say, you know, well, it's a whole other topic. But, you know, if if, <laughs> if, if something's my fault, that's actually a good thing because I can fix it. <laughs> like that's makes yeah. life way no, easier. Accountability is powerful. That's a whole other yeah. episode, or maybe it's yep. this episode. But before we do that, I want to yes. talk about our first sponsor, which is Linode at L-I-N-O-D-E dot com slash S-B-S. If you need a server for your business, and I don't know how you wouldn't, Linode is where you want to go. And the cool part is their plans start at just five bucks a month to use their all SSD based servers, because that's the thing that slows you down more than anything else is running on spinning disks. Linode has standardized all their servers on SSDs. So even at that $5 a month plan where you have, you know, like limited CPU and, and limited Ram, but probably enough to run like your little WordPress site or whatever, You've got the SSDs there. So when someone requests information, boom, it's coming up right away because you're not reading it from a spinning disk. This makes a huge difference. Of course, if you need more resources than that, you can scale all the way up to something with a dedicated CPU and distributed applications and hosted services and all of that, of course. But it really starts with that same foundation all the way through 10 worldwide data centers and you pay for what you use with hourly billing across all their plans and add-on services, 20 bucks. Why do I say 20 bucks? Because that's the credit that you get for being a small business show listener. Visit linode.com slash SBS and use promo code SBS2019. That gets you 20 bucks onto your account. $5 a month is where you can start. So you could have up to four months free Linode.com slash SBS. Our thanks to Linode for sponsoring this episode. All awesome. right, man. So uh, what is our topic for today? Now that, <laughs> now yeah, that I've brought us in six different directions. Yeah. No, it's good. No, I, I have I have something I'd love to talk about today. Yeah, and uh, it is related to MVPs. Minim <laughs> Not most valuable this. players. <laughs> nope. Nope. Minimally viable product. And I also uh, kind of subtitled this, you know, powering through the last mile. And one of the issues that I've faced numerous times in my uh, small business career is when you're developing a new product or service or when you're starting a brand new business, uh, it's it's that last mile, the, the last maybe 20 percent of work that has to get done as you get close to being ready to launch. Yeah. You know, you're, you're almost ready but, you know, you or someone else just wants to make a few changes, add another feature, run one more test, change the website, do something like that. This is the point where things can go terribly wrong. And I'd love to talk about it today on the show. Yeah. Well, perfect is the enemy of good is what you're oh, describing here. Right. Like, I like that. Yeah. that philosophy. <laughs> that's that like that's the thing is if yeah. you're if you're trying to make it exactly perfect but also everything that you 
have in mind for this, you will never finish. No way. Forget it. Yeah. Right. And I, I would argue that uh, we talk about mindset and creating your own reality in your subconscious a lot on this show. And I think in, in a lot of us, there is something that that holds us back. You know, there's that whether it's fear, whether it's oh, I want it to be right. I don't want to be embarrassed by this, whatever it is. I, I don't know. But I just see it, you know, frequently come up and you're just like, why? Why is this person, including me? Yeah. <laughs> why are we in front getting stopping from from getting it out? And so um I, ha- I have some steps that I've implemented to try to help me get through this. And uh, uh, l- I'd love to share them. Yeah, the because today. yeah, because they, it's that fear of success, fear of failure, yeah. fear of change. Right. Like if you're rolling sure. something out, like, it, you know, I think about it when we're talking about this. I think software because we're constantly yeah, rolling different engines or something with the website at Mac Observer. Or, you know, we have different engines at Backbeat. And we did. We did. We just recently rolled out our uh, what we call our pod man podcast man manager where we manage all the timestamps and ads and you know so all the podcasters can have everything in one place and we rolled out the new version of that three months after we um we planned because of you know like some of this some of it was legitimate like whoa we got some showstoppers but sure but you know you can start you have to start drawing the line and saying nope we're just gonna we're going to embrace this change not fear it. So, yeah. What are, you, yeah, what are your yeah. what are your tricks there? Yeah, sure. So uh, w- one of the things that I think is important is to know that it's, you know, recognize it's not going to be perfect and to embrace iteration uh, and to start from the beginning that way and have this discussion like we're having right now is to, to talk about, OK, so how do we get to this MVP, this minimally viable product? How, how, what are the steps that we need to take? And then we, when we release it, okay, maybe it's not going to be, well, we know it's not going to be exactly what we want, but where does it have to be where we can push it out there and we can tell, you know, tell people that it's not exactly what you want. You know, there's a lot of, especially <laughs> software, especially, and I have to be involved in a, a, a software venture right now. Or I'm going through this. It, you know, it's never going to be exactly right. Right. Ever. That That's no. the whole concept. Right. Um, you know, we've been talking about subscription services a lot on the show lately, and that's what these companies do. You know, they're constantly iterating. And as a subscriber, you get the benefit of that iteration. Right. Um, and it, it just it's not going to end when you launch it. And, you know, like Google is is famous for pushing out MVPs, right? And then just stamping beta on it. And That's hey, right. we, we think this thing's going to work, but just in case, you know, um, it, it's beta software. I mean, Gmail had a beta stamp on it for, uh, I think, almost a decade. It felt like <laughs> right. a decade. That's right. Yeah. yeah. No, that was their yeah. way of sort of training people to be, yeah. to be accepting of iterative you know, design, but it is Correct. the best way to do it. And what I find, you know, thinking about this most recent thing with Podman, but but this was the, you know, the most recent project. So I certainly have had projects that have gone on even longer and even worse. But, um, you know, we started making a list of all of the things. Now, this was version two of Podman for us. So okay. we, we had the idea like we already had one working. And it was like, all right, what do we want to change? If we had this to do all over again, which it turns out we're going to, you know, what would we change fundamentally with this? And there were some things that caused this change. And then while we're at it, what else are we going to do? And what we did was we went through and thought, okay, what are the things that like, let's just list all the things we want. Doesn't matter what order, just throw them all out there. Now, looking at all the things that we want, what are the what are the things that have to be there in order for you know some of these features that are on this list have to be precursors to others and so those have to be there in the beginning right because sure yeah you, you got to lay the right foundation because you now you know where you're going with it so instead of that entire thing being you know, the 1.0 development process, it's like set 1.0 is exactly what you call it. MVP. What can we roll out that people can use and gives us the foundation to build on. And then, you know, we can start work on 1.1 
the day after we roll 1.0. Now, that's not necessarily the smartest no, thing right. to do because there's going to be bugs in 1.0 that you didn't test for and you, you probably need to have some time to fix those. But, yeah. you know, if not, then right now, you know, you t- like just keep on trucking. And internally, while there is the, you know, release day, um, internally, not much changes like release day becomes a distraction. It's like, oh, we have to change what we do and go and roll this thing live and communicate it to the users and get everything right. And and then once we're through that, now we can go back and put our heads down. I mean, we still got to listen, but now we can go back and, and do exactly what we were doing two days ago, which is continuing to build this thing. Yep. And we're just adding yeah. more features. You know, that that's right. That that's the way to get your head around it for me. Yeah. For us. It's, you're going to. Yeah. Inter- yeah. And uh, that's like one of the first things on my list is, yeah. you know. Decide in advance what features you have to have to ship it, right? right? I and mean, define what are, the MVP. Yeah, what are the minimal viable, you know, uh, features that have to make this to make this thing work? If you're going to launch a product, yep. or if you're going to launch a, a, if you're starting a new business, okay, what product or services are we offering, and and how do we kind of. Uh, we talked about tunnel vision, but in, in the beginning of the show, but in a little different way, how do we just keep our focus on this and, and kind of come up with this punch list of what needs to happen before we launch? What are the minimal things? Do we have to have a very expensive sign on the building or can we put a banner up there and let that run for a couple of months, uh, you know, uh, until we make some money and then go buy a $5,000 sign or whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of steps that you can do. And then, to, again, to your point, as you're working on this stuff, you're going to think of all kinds of things. You'd be like, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could do this? Wouldn't it be great? That stuff is very v- valuable, really powerful, but it needs to go on another list. Yeah, I was just going to say, capture, don't ignore them just because right. you know you're not going to do them now. In fact, yes. like that that's where your great ideas come from. You know, I always say that yeah. the hardest part about running a business is that no one is there to tell you what to do. So you have to listen to yourself and also you listen to your employees and your team and your customers and all of that. But you really have to listen to yourself. So when you're in one of those moments where you're like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? We can't do that right now. But wouldn't that be cool? Write it down because you will forget. That's right. As cool as it seems in the moment, you will forget about it. So write it down. Yep. (laughs) I love that concept. And, you know, having like a a big whiteboard or turning your entire uh, an entire wall into a whiteboard or a hallway or something. And not only, you know, for stuff that you think of, but just anybody in your organization, this wouldn't it be great if. Yes. Right. Where somebody could go by and write something down that they get frustrated with. And, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could offer this? Wouldn't it be great if the product did this? Uh, Those are, you know, those are gems that uh, are tremendous opportunities. Maybe maybe 90 percent of maybe 99 percent of them are just not realistic or not affordable, whatever. But there's going to be some stuff in there that. I would suggest to you could change your business in dramatic ways and could become an entirely new business or new product or new service that you offer because you've been capturing that data. It's yeah. that's, that's a gold mine of stuff. And I'm really glad you mentioned that because uh, too often somebody makes a comment as they're walking by and you're like, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> and then you never think of it again. That's it. Um, you know, that's write it, it down. Put it on a board, create some, you know, put it on a piece of software that you guys are sharing. But I really do like the visual of having stuff in front of you on the wall. You know, we used to put post quotes all the time because I like to see them as I'm walking by. If you're having a bad day, you know, looking at quotes that help you power through things from people that have succeeded uh, or overcome obstacles is is really powerful, that visual. So write yeah. that stuff down and, and, you know, and keep it front and center. Um, I think that'd be awesome. And maybe well, and even that, let your customers do yeah, it. Yeah. And that whiteboard, right. Yeah. If it's the kind of thing that that's okay to share with customers and have them well, participate yeah. in, then that's maybe a you have a, idea. maybe you have a second one and put yeah. it in your lobby. You know, Hey, what if, what, what, what would be great if we did this and have customers write things down when they come in? Cause people get, you know, I mean, I, I dealt with, I've been dealing with customers for, for 25 years and people are always like, I wish you guys could do, you know, why can't you do this? Okay. Yeah. Put it on the board. Not only can you get some good tidbits of information. I mean, you know, again, maybe 99% of them are going to be psychotic, but I doubt it. But you also are going to make that customer feel good. Like, wow, that's interesting. I get to contribute 
something yeah. to this to this company. It's a really unique idea that I've never really thought of until we started talking. Yeah, no, that's a well, great. I like this idea. Yeah. Plus, it, it you know to to your point with that, but even with your employees having that there with with just random, even crazy ideas. Absolutely. On yep. it encourages people to share i to not put up as much of a filter right because yeah. you don't they want don't even need to put their name on it right no if, just if they put don't it want out to there. Yeah. i think this is yeah. cool i'm gonna put it out there somebody might think it's stupid they, they, there's no such thing as stupid uh, you know yep. like yep. just uh, yep. in this environment like just throw it out there if it actually yeah. turns out to be stupid that's fine we just don't do it it's like yeah that's yeah, right the, no harm no foul you process the idea out and maybe just maybe you thinking about that idea or someone else seeing that idea will get you to the next idea to the next yeah, idea and then the huge. third one down the chain is the one that is that light bulb that dramatically changes you know your efficiency or maybe grows your business whatever it is you got to yeah. just let that stuff you talk about and it it's something i've struggled with um, in my businesses and I've, I'm trying to be a lot better about it, but you talk about, you know, fostering a culture of change and, and yeah. I like to, I like to insert perpetual change. So yeah. Sure. And the nice part of, and, and to fit that in here, you're developing an MVP, but you're just throwing all these other ideas that are coming up out. You might not implement yeah. all of them. That's okay. But oh, yeah. don't implement yeah. all of them for your MVP. You know, no, you it, can't. You no, can't. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. And and another thing that I and, and I love this idea and I want to just say this is one of the reasons why I do this show, because I always learn the most out of anybody, because I'm going to implement this. Uh, wouldn't it be great if board? Maybe you could call it a why can't we board, too? Right. Uh, oh, why yeah. can't we off? Why can't we offer a lifetime warranty? I don't know. Why do, can't do we? You wanna, da, 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 da. Yeah, that's right. OK, right. When you said, why can't we? I, my my first thought was, ooh, I hate to that's say negative. we can't yeah. do anything. Yes. But when you say, why can't we do a thing? Now that's yes. challenging negativity. I Correct. like this. Correct. That's great. Yeah, why can't we? What What's stopping us from doing yeah, X? Yeah. You know? I, I, and that really gets you, uh, I don't know, that's just what everybody's done. Or that's, a, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, why can't we do this? Why can't we offer that? So I, yeah. I, I really, I love that. I love it. So oh, I like this. All right. Well, wait, wait for a minute. Too. Why can't yep. we talk about our second group of sponsors oh. right now? Brilliant segue. I love it. it. <laughs> uh, our next sponsor today is The Alternative Board at thealternativeboard.com. This is fantastic, right? Yep. You run your business, but just like we were just saying, you have nobody to tell you what to do. But what if you, why can't you have a board that helps you with your decisions that you can a sounding board, right? Why can't you have this? You can through the alternative board, also known as tab. And for close to 30 years, the alternative board has helped owners and CEOs just like you through all these advisory boards. As a tab member, you meet up with up to 10 local non-competing business leaders each month. Plus you get expert one-on-one -on -one business coaching for your company's specific needs. And the results, tab members say they speak for themselves. In fact, a tab survey showed that their members surpassed average sales of other privately held businesses by two and a half times. You've got nothing to lose. This is the beauty of this. So why can't you, to stick in the theme of the episode here, well, go to www.thealternativeboard.com slash SBS. That's how you help us because you go there and they know we sent you www.thealternativeboard.com slash SBS. And you'll find out if there's a tab board seat available in your area. Don't wait. Just do it now. www.thealternativeboard.com slash SBS. Our thanks to the Alternative Board for sponsoring this episode. You know how we tell you to go to businessshow.co? I'd also like to tell you to go to go.co slash SBS. It sounds like almost the same thing, but what you get at the second one, go.co slash SBS, is you get to get your own .co domain just like us. And, you know, just like Google, they use G.co and Campus.co, just like the newly funded Mirror.co and Bird.co, all the coolest startups use .co and it's because there's a way better chance of getting the exact domain name that you want compared to .com. Plus, 
Go.co offers startup goodies. You can check out their website for access to freebies, perks, resources, and other great tools designed specifically for startups and new businesses. So you got to check this out. Go to go.co slash SBS today for our special offer. You register your .co domain for just $5 and get three months of website builder and hosting services for free. Go.co slash SBS today. Don't wait. Our thanks to Go.co for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, I made awesome. you wait. But now yeah, it's, okay, it's good. It's huh? good. Yeah, that's no, great. So I have a few more things on my list to in, in order to kind of power through and get to a minimally viable product and avoid uh, this sta- uh, what I call the stagnation of perfection. Uh, oh, because yeah. it, it, it just slows you down. And, uh, you know, the, the first one we talked about, you know, decide in advance what features you're going to have, uh, stick to that list, but create that secondary list for future features or services that you're going to offer or products you're going to sell for your business. The third thing is I, I like to set hard dates, uh, for your benchmarks, you know, okay. In, in two weeks, we're going to have this and we're going to meet and have this done in 30 days. We're going to be here. And this, you know, you mentioned launch date. I mean, I do like to have that on both of them. I, I like to give myself a cushion and and be like, OK, we're shooting for, you know, August 1st. We, that 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 would be great. But we know we have this, you know, we, if we get it out by the 15th, it's going to be fine or whatever, you, whatever we want to do. You got to um, be careful with that. I it, like yeah. on both sides of it. If you yep. if you have a launch date in mind and you hold so firmly to it that, you know, you're cutting off your nose to spite your face, you're releasing right. truly before it's ready. That's really bad. That's a problem. Of but course. if yeah. you have yeah. a release date and you look and say, well, it doesn't really matter if we wait three extra months. Like, who cares? We just got to get it right. Like you, you, there, there's a balance there. And I, I don't I don't know how to communicate how to do this. But what we do is we start looking and we say, like, when we start the project, it's OK. This is probably going to take three months. I mean, we say it's probably going to take six weeks. So therefore, it's going to take three months because we've learned. You know? <laughs> right. Right. But that's, that's, that's fine. Cushion, that <laughs> yeah. But then, OK. Yeah. Then so I'll put a thing on the calendar for, you know, a month before we thought we were going to be finished or depending on the scope of the project, maybe a week before we thought it was going to be finished, if it's smaller or something. And then it's like, OK, are we still on track here for that? And if not, Why? And is it for good reason or is it because we've gotten distracted with something else or we're not focused or what, you know, whatever? Let's answer that question. Okay, let's keep marching towards that date. And then, you know, if that was a month out, two weeks out, it'll be okay. Realistically, where are we here? And could we launch in a week? Because if we can't, if we're two weeks out and we don't believe that we could launch in a week, there's no way we're launching in two weeks. It's just sure. like, that, yeah, that, that, you know, I know if we buckle down, we can work twice as fast on something to just sprint to the end. And there's no reason usually to sprint to the end. But if you couldn't, that's indicative of a bigger problem. OK, so now let's identify what that problem is. Let's solve it. And and maybe it means paring down your MVP further uh, yeah. at that point. Yep. Like, OK, can we launch without that? Well, you know, you have a discussion. Yes. No. Okay, fine. You do that with a few features. Great. Okay. Now let's just get it out. And then you get closer and closer. And, and, you know, I, we, most of the time will have a false launch. We'll get together and say, okay, tonight's the night we're going to roll this all around and we start doing it. It's like, Hey, here's a thing we didn't think about, (laughs) you know, like, Oh, here's a little wrinkle. Great. No problem. We already had tomorrow night scheduled because we knew that we needed a a second night. We just didn't know why, you know, those sorts of things. And, And you learn that about yourself and your tolerance for risk and all of that stuff. But there is some risk and you just have to, you have to bottle that up and, and deal with it. Yeah. I I agree. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I I think that uh, those those are really important. And and I think also when you're getting ready to launch, uh, another thing on my list is, you know, plan for a soft launch. You know, don't go out of the gate with, you know, the horns blaring and every PR thing going and, you know, attracting tons of users or whatever it is. You're probably not going to be ready for that kind of volume. You're not maybe, you know, if it's a brand new business, maybe you're not ready for hundreds or thousands of customers to come barreling through your door on your website. Um, it, and 
I also think when that, as I wrote this soft launch, I also think, especially when you're creating something, it, it's good to be humble and get that across to your customers. Like, hey, we built this new thing. We think it's great, but we really want your input. You know, we 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 know we're it's it's version 1.0 or we're just getting started, whatever it is. Um, so getting them on your side of the table, look, we talk about that all the time on this show. Um, but getting them to be like, oh, hey, this is something new. So I can get involved and, you know, have a chance to to have some input on is powerful versus somebody thinking, oh, I'm going to go buy this thing and, you know, damn it, it doesn't work. And I'm not, I'm not happy with these, you know, this thing. Um, it, it, it's a fine line. And that's, again, launch. Maybe you got to market as beta. Maybe uh, you have to get some friendly reviewers to come in and explain it and get their feedback. Uh, but, but I like that soft launch, the quiet launch, if you will, before you, uh, really put the, put your foot on the gas. Yeah, no, that's smart. And I, that, that communicate humility, that's key. Like here's a new thing. I know we screwed some stuff up. I know we missed some stuff because we're testing from our perspective and not yours. I love it. If you take a look and if you see anything wrong, let me know. We are here ready to jump on this stuff, you know? Yeah. And and I, yeah. Yeah. And I also think that humility, uh, lets you take more risk. And I, and I will tell you from first, my own perspective is like doing this show has, uh, really allowed me to, uh, take more risk and feel more confident because I often fall back on, Hey, this is what's worked for me. I don't know. I mean, like I'm, I'm the first to say I learn the most on this show always, sure. but these are the things that I have used to reach some level of success in the last, you know, 25 years. And these are the, multi- the companies that I've started, but it doesn't mean it's right. It, it's not right for every, every situation. This is, you know, so uh, I, I think it's really a, a powerful thing to um, put that out there that you're, you're ready for corrections or feedback and different, uh, different takes on it. I think yeah. it, gives, it, 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 it gives you some freedom that maybe you wouldn't have. It, it's, again, speaking of my own thing is that who wants to listen to me talk about business, right? I mean, but <laughs> by you think about it, it's but true. if you're, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, nobody wants to, that, that's your inner judge is saying, well, you know, I don't, nobody's going to listen to me. I don't know. Whatever. I do. I, 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 I You I, say I, you've learned more at, at, during every well, episode and I just chuckle because I know that I'm the one that learns more and that's yeah, okay. But, yeah. yeah. And, and, but it kind of opened a door for me. Yeah. Um, I don't have a business degree, right? Nobody told me what to do. Like what you said, I just did it and try to figure things out that work for me. And I made a million mistakes. And, and I think that's another way it, I've opened the door is talking about our mistakes all the time. Uh, instead of trying to prop yourself up as this, you know, huge success story uh, by actually sharing those mistakes and talking about them, um, it, it, it really can change things for you and make you, I think, much more confident in whatever you're doing with your new business, new product, new service and all that stuff. Um, and, and then the last thing I have, I mean, is know that it's not going to be exactly what you want when you first start. It, it's just not, you know, you're not going to be able to or you'll sit there whiling away forever again stagnating in perfection, you know, trying to create this thing. Just get it out there. We talk about starting on this show all the time. That's the critical part. Start and then iterate over and over and over. Explain, you know, solve problems as they come up uh, and, you know, you'll be on the way to success. I, I When I was in college, this is the last story I'll tell on the show. But uh, the when I was in college, I, I worked in the summertime building decks with a guy who was a, just an unbelievable carpenter. And, you know, I used to get really hung up on all these little details and everything else. And he's like, hey, you know we're building decks. We're not building a piano. Oh. And he used to constantly tell me that. And I was like, Oh yeah. You know, people are going to be walking on this on their feet. And he'd be like, look at the view. That's what they're going to look at. Look at the people they, think about it. They're going to be looking at, at people. They're not going to be staring at the ground. You know, you got to make it good. Your quality has to be good because the person paying you wants to see that good quality. But if, if you're building a piano that people are going to walk on, you're never going to finish and your, your business is never going to succeed. Yeah. Oh, that's great. 
Yeah. Man, so I, I, I remind myself all the time about that. Not building a piano. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. You know. Yeah, what, but it's a it's a common issue that uh, lots of business people face. I think. No, it's true. And throughout the process, one thing you need to bear in mind is is the concept of a sunk cost, right? Like, oh, yeah. if if you're doing something, even if you thought it was part of your MVP, and you get you know where you finish some part of it, and then you realize, whoa, we did that wrong, you know, like. Be okay yeah. with scrapping that. Like, like th- that's what this version two of this Podman thing that we released was all about. It was like, wow, we did it wrong the first time. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Do you want to take that and try and fix it? No. I want to start from scratch. Like, th- it was way better yeah, for us really to just. Important, man. But, yeah. but you know, it's <laughs> like, hard. Hard it's, to do. It's hard because you've put all this yeah. time and or money or both, you know, into it, and it's like, well, but it's the wrong thing. Okay. Fine. Just let yep. it go. Yep. It's all good. So, so uh, on that note, if if you're done with this topic, yes. I, I, I want to introduce a, a new uh, segment to the show uh, where I just want to know what's going on with your business. And, and I'd like to talk about what's going on in, in art. You know, we each have multiple businesses that we run. And uh, the topic that you just mentioned is uh, uh, that sunk cost, I think, is a really good thing. And I'm in the middle of that right now. And I'd, I'd love to... Uh, to talk about it. Yeah, go, you go first, but, but I've got, yeah, I've got something to share too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So what's going on with me is, uh, so I started a business, uh, almost a year ago with, uh, super, some great guys, great partners, um, very smart. And it was a software company, uh, because I fell in love with this piece of software they created and I used it to run another company that I have and I couldn't live without it. And I thought, man, we really have to build this thing and promote it. And after spending, a significant amount of money and a significant amount of time, you know, almost a year, I realized that the software wasn't what people wanted to buy from us. It was our, it was really more about our knowledge and why we were using. Yeah. The, the software was, we couldn't charge enough to, to uh, pay for the support that, it needed. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, okay. totally. So yeah. 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 It just it couldn't do it. We didn't have a big enough user base and it was too specific uh, specific. And you and couldn't retool the software to need less support. Right. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, it, I tried that. We tried, <laughs> I tried that too. And, and automation and everything. And it, and it was, there was a lot of sunk costs involved. And finally we said, you know what? We can't sell these subscriptions anymore. We have to stop. And, we have to then create this business that what what people really want. There's all kinds of, of software out there to do what we're doing. Got it. And and so we realized that and said we would make more money and maybe and more importantly, provide a better service and be more personally fulfilled by changing the entire business model and creating uh, it, it giving access to the knowledge that we have to these people. And so that's what we're in the process of doing right now. And and. It, Letting go of those sunk costs and and maybe even more importantly, the time, you know, I'm always in a rush. I'm always like, we got to be able to launch. We got to get this thing off the ground. Uh, giving up that year, it took me a year to really figure that out. That was the tuition that I had to pay. Yeah, uh, right. And, and, and so, sometimes uh, that's you know, what it is. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, it you is. know, I man, what a great phrase you just uttered, the tuition I had to pay. So here's the thing, right? You and I experience this because we currently live it with, you know, kids in college and going to college and all of that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, college tuition is super expensive right now, especially, to, you know, if you go to certain places or or navigate the financial aid waters a certain way or the wrong way. Um and I often say, you know, for these schools that cost 70 grand a year or whatever, like that, that's a quarter of a million dollars that you're going to invest in yourself. Where is the payoff on that? Right. Like, yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and important. for most people, the answer is it's not anywhere. So beware that too, just yep. as an aside. That's right. But saying that was the tuition I had to pay. Like there are those lessons that we learn. We call them mistakes, oh, yeah. but so often they become that tuition. Like, okay, I paid this. I learned a thing. Was it fun? Well, you know, there were some moments. We had some parties on Friday night. That was cool. Sure. But, you know, all in all, no, I worked my butt off. And what did I get out of it? I got knowledge. 
Like that's what you, you got experience. Yeah. And man, what a value, what a valuable perspective, man. It, that's it, the best it thing is. We've and said and once I, episode. I love it. Yeah. Once I get some more distance on it and we launch this new product mm-hmm. that we're, that we're selling in this new community that we're creating to help these people, because that's what I was doing and that's what they valued. Uh, uh, it's going to be great. And I'll talk about it on the show and everything. It's a little raw right now still, but uh, you know, and, and we're kind of in this MVP thing as well. This is actually what led me to, uh, you know, develop the topic for the show was how do we make sure we keep powering through when we're at, you know, 90%. Um, so it's good. It's really helpful for me. So w- what's going on with your business? Actually, today? you know, I have an idea. This segment yes. is new, right? And we're literally just new. starting it now. What if yep. we just alternate weeks? Oh, and, that's a good idea. Right. And then we can, it, it can almost be like, you know, we're, we'll, we'll coach each other. We'll be our business yeah. therapists. So there you I go. I like it. Yep. And yeah, it's you our, know, yeah. if you folks have a thing going on and you want us to do this with you and with your scenario, write us a note, feedback at businessshow.co. That's how we find out what you're thinking, what you want us to cover in the show. And it can be generic or it can be very specific. It, you, you know, you you choose and just let us know whether you want us to mention your name or your business name or not. And that's OK. Like, we're OK either way. No problem. We get it. Some things need to stay obscure or confidential. And that's totally fine. So we'd love to sure. hear from you. Yeah, it's good. Oh, stuff. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Great show. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, Again, I always learn the most and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you at feedback at businessshow.co. Feedback at businessshow.co. Yeah, we love it. And uh, thanks to our sponsors, of course, linode.com slash SBS, thealternativeboard.com slash SBS and go.co slash SBS. See you next week.